to strip the wall. Now, people like the idea of a nice, flat, smooth wall, because this at the minute's got wood chip on it. Now, the reason it's got wood chip on it is because the walls are not flat. The plaster's not great on them. Um, so, really, if a customer asks you to strip an anaglyptor off, uh, wood chip or some finished papers with a decent pattern, they all hide all the bad plaster work. So, you know, you could say yes to your customer and by the time that you've you finished, you're left with a wall which is a bit lumpy uh, because of the bad plaster. I'll show you what I mean. Starting up there where the uh, picture rail is, you can see the picture rail under the, the edge of it kind of disappears at points and that is all the way along and basically it's the same with the skirting board as well so all the way along the skirting board the plaster comes out goes back in it's not as bad as the picture rail but it's, um, it's still the same have a quick look on this so I don't... Yeah, you can see there where it's the plaster bows out. Now basically where it is, these old houses, the actual picture rail and the skirting board, they're nailed on first because they put blocks of wood into the brickwork and then they nail the picture rail on and then they nail the skirting board on and then they actually do the plastering. So in modern houses, it's not done like that anymore. You'll do the full plaster work, then fit the skirting, and then fit the picture rail. Now, you can't really pick it up, but there is lumps on this wall underneath. I can see them already. Um, so I know for a fact, once it's stripped, and we put the lining paper on, you are gonna see more of the lumps. So again, half the reason you put textured papers on is to make the wall look more pleasing. Just a quick talk through of the gear you're gonna to need to do this, the tools. Now, first off, is a decent Stanley knife, you know, with a nice sharp blade. I've got various scrapers to see which one is the best because every blade, every scraper has got a different uh, edge on it so some are better for different wallpapers. I've also got a nail block in case I need it and I've got the six inch flat brush. Sorry I think that's a five inch actually. Yeah, five inch. Um, some plastic bags for your rubbish, buckets of water and a damp cloth, that's for wiping on the skirting board, the woodwork. Now I've also got the steam stripper out. Nine out of ten times you don't have to use a steam stripper. They can sometimes cause problems on a job where they blow the plaster, um, especially plasterboard. Very difficult to use a steam stripper on plasterboard. Um, but I will go through the process of setting it up and best technique for using it. So first of all, what you need to do, making sure you've turned the electric off because you're working where there's sockets. Once you've done that, taking your Stanley knife what you want to do is cut round the woodwork. Now, what this will do is, as you're stripping the paper, it'll leave a nice neat edge to work to. Well, starting at the top there.
some of that paper actually that laps around onto the woodwork there a bit, but we'll deal with that after. And I'll show you the picture rail. So nice sharp blade, you can use your hand on the skirting board as a guide. Nice neat line put. We've cut round all the paper now to give us a neat edge for when we strip. The actual light socket I'm going to leave to last so you don't get any water and muck going down the back of it. So strip all the wall and then unscrew, strip the last little bit of paper and clean the socket, screw it back. So what I'll show you now is the steam stripper first. First thing you want to do is fill it up. Now, there's no point in putting cold water in it because you're going to sit waiting for it to warm up. So what I usually do is either fill a bucket of water up with warm water or take it down to the tap and see if I can actually use the tap at the sink to fill it up with warm water. So when that settles, that should be okay on that line there. And then screw the lid on, making sure it's t tight. Now look at that, 100 degrees, steam, very dangerous. Then plug it in. Attach your diffuser. Now always put that end in a bucket. You can already hear that heating up. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Make the thread nice and lined up. Make sure that's on tight. Sometimes you have to readjust them because as they heat up, they can uh, expand a little bit. So I'll just make sure it's always on tight. And now it's just a waiting game. The reason you put it in a bucket like that is because as it's heating up and the steam starts working up, it condenses slightly in the cold tube. So it always pushes out water before the steam starts coming out. Now, while we're waiting for it to heat up, I'll show you the, uh, the nail block. Um, you can actually buy wallpaper scout, uh, scorers that'll cut through into the paper, which will help the steam go through better. You don't always have to use them because sometimes papers just want to fall off and you just put the steam stripper near them and they bubble up and straight off. But with this, it's got silk on it, so it's more uh, waterproof. So we need to break through the surface. Um, I'll show you this section here. So, again, I've made this myself. You can see it's just a few nails into a piece of wood, and a bit on the back. Perfect. and just go over the whole wall, scraping it like that. Alternatively, you can actually just use your scraper on wood chip and you can knock off the wood chips.
and again you can do that all over just helps the water soak in better but usually what I do first is just check the wallpaper just see how easy it is going to come off before you go through the steps of scraping off the paint uh, the top of the surface like that or even getting your steam stripper out always just double check how easy it comes off because sometimes you'll be surprised it just wants to come off You're always better just leaving it in a bucket of water like that, or just in a bucket, sorry, just so if there's any water going to come through, it'll just squirt it into the bucket. Right, you've got to be really careful with this because of the boiling water. Now, best start it at the top. And Never keep it on the wall too long. You know, you can move it about a little bit at the beginning just to get a section warmed up. If you're ever using these on plasterboard, you're going to have a problem half the time because the plasterboard will just delaminate if you hold it too long in one place. It's already working the silk up. It's not got through to the back in yet. It can be a very slow process using a steam stripper. People think they're quick, but sometimes they're not. Especially when you're doing a whole room. You can prepare the wall like that and keep wetting it with water. And by the time you've done it and wetted it a few times, it just falls off. Very difficult. You see there already why you do that edge there. The paper's coming off nice and neat up to it. Like I say, the trick is, is to keep moving it about. Don't leave it in one spot too long. When you've heated the section up and you've got a bit and you're scraping it off, you can slowly move the diffuser slightly along a little bit, just giving you an edge to work at, and then 
scrape that edge off. Then move it all along the rim bit. Scrape the next edge off. As long as you're constantly moving the steam stripper about, you're not going to damage the plaster. when you leave it in one place for too long you can start damaging plaster, especially with plasterboard now, there's one thing I don't like about steam strippers actually heats up your paint and woodwork so it can start bringing it off and it can cause a right mess so you can see that the foam bringing it off especially with the water based paints absolute nightmare at times People think steam strippers are easy to use. They're not. Hate them. This isn't my preferred method whatsoever. Um, sometimes you do have to use it because you just can't get the paper off. Now, when you're using this on a ceiling and you're holding it up, You've always got to be conscious that it can fill up a little bit with warm, with boiling water. So every time you take it off the ceiling, make sure you drop it to one side and not drop it near your face or your arm. Drop it to one side. Let's get rid of this. Just a quick look at that paint there. Look at that. And then it all starts peeling off. Oh. And you're left with an absolute nightmare. So that's what um, a steam stripper can do. Cause you more problems than soft pee. Look at that. Absolutely ridiculous. Water based paints, I don't know. Right, it'll harden off again and it won't be too bad. So first off, before I do anything, I'll take the scraper and I'll work to the wall underneath. Oh, look at that. Now that's without the steam stripper. Not going to have too much of a problem with this. You are going to get some difficult bits. But obviously, I've picked quite an easy bit there. Again, the reason you cut at the top is because you end up with a nice neat edge and the paper coming off nicely. Um, so, if it wasn't coming off, that easily. Let me show you on this other section just here. What I do is remove the wood chips and then you can soak it with your water. Now you can use a spray, you can spray water on if you want, but I like using the uh, flat brush. Now, no water dripping off it, but it's loaded with water. A little bit of soap in your water really does help. The bubbles allow the water to stay on the wall longer without evaporating off.
basically repeat that process. Now, move on, do another section and keep going round. And when you've soaked it for 10 minutes, come back to it and then soak it again. And basically you keep doing that until you come up to it and it's just falling off. Another good trick with all these bits that you're stripping off is to take them off and then lie them along the floor. Especially pieces like that, you can get them right up to the skirting board. Now, what that helps is as you're stripping and all your waste is falling on top of it like that, when you come to clean up, all you've got to do is roll it up, fold it up and put it in your bin bag and you're sorted. So the bits that I'm dry scraping because it's coming off so easily, you've got to make sure you get all the little bits of paper off with it. And it's coming off so easily because of the old emulsions on the wall. See that? It's like powder. So what you're better doing as you're going is removing some of that. And what you can't remove will seal with diluted PVA. So you're best trying to remove as much as you can. Um, and again that's why it's good to lay your paper like that because any muck coming down you catch it on it. What you're after doing is getting the surface nice and smooth. Um, already we're uncovering some uh, holes. So I'll finish stripping this and you can have a look. Let's just have a look at the bit that's been soaking. Um, I'll just put a bit of extra water on there. Now, I've not even left this 10 minutes really, so I'll just give it a quick go. I mean, it's going to come off anyway because the walls, but you can see it's beginning to soak in. Yeah, it's going to come off easy, but it's definitely beginning to soak in there. You can see a bit of damp bit on the wall. So, like I say, that's not even been soaking five minutes. But that's one of the best methods to remove most types of wallpaper. Um, if you come across a wallpaper that's like a finished paper, usually the front of them will peel off, leaving the backing on. And then all you've got to do is wet the backing and it just falls off. So, again, steam stripper, my method. And another method if it's a bit tougher. So I'll show you the wall once we've stripped it back. The bit where I started using the steam stripper on is a lot tougher than the rest of it. Um, I knew that anyway because I could tell and that's why I did start there with the steam stripper just to show you. I mean most of it is coming off quite easy um, but then you get to bits which are a bit more stubborn. You know that's not too bad but you can see the that's new plaster. So that's actually been put on new plaster there. And coming to this side, again, it's a lot more tough. So I am going to have to scrape the surface off the wet parts of this. Um, but before I do any of that, I'm going to continue stripping to get any loose bits off that can. You can see what water does to it. That's all damp that. Nice and so water does really help. You know. um, so you can persevere using your scrapers best you can. And you can 
scrape off as much as you can, denibbing the surface where it's a bit uh, tough. Wet it in and wait for it to soak and then scrape that off. So you do get the odd stubborn bit, but again, it's worth just scraping the front off if you can, wet it in and then carry on doing something else while it's soaking. Let the water do the work. As you're waiting for bits to soak, there's always something to do. So I'm going to drop back onto this side and I'm going to start washing the paste off the wall. Wetting in a section. This will also get any loose bits of paper, um, sorry, any bits of paper that are left stuck on. So once you've soaked a section in, using your scrapers, I use the filling blade on this bit. That's a bit straight. To your brush now, and again, this is why I've got the floor covered up. You can just put some more water in there. Step in getting the wall smooth. Doing a lot of sanding and stuff. And then once you've done that, taking the cloth, you can wipe over the wood. All the wall is stripped off now and I've just got this uh, socket left to do. So back it off. Remember the electric's off for the sockets. Now, little tap and it usually releases quite easily. 
there's no need to back it off all the way because sometimes you can cause yourself problems trying to get things back in. Now, your damp cloth and your filling blade, just white round. Now, do the wall first. You're trying to not get the debris to drop behind if you can help it. It's not too much behind, actually. It looks like they might have papered it with it on the wall. So. Again, damp cloth around. Now, you can see there's paint and muck all on that edge. Usually what I do, because it's still wet, it just comes off nice and easy. Just wipe it over with a cloth and keep it wet. Some sockets you're not going to be able to do this with metal ones, you know, shiny ones, but the plastic ones you can usually get away with doing that. And it is only the top edges, you know, just, you're not really going all over it. Only where the paint's stuck on. Just that bottom one So again, it's going to need a little sand round, but well, that's not too bad at all. If there's any paint left on, it usually comes off with your finger. Just give it a... There you go. Now, for the time being, I'm going to screw that back. There's no need to leave it up. Now when you hear about people cutting with blades around things, you've got to be careful. Um, especially around sockets like that, because if you have left the electric on, um, you're not going to unscrew the socket and you're just going to cut around it with your paper. Let me just show you this. See that there? That's a grey wire. I mean, what, what's that doing there? I just don't know. So, you know, um, dangerous. You cut round there with your standard blade, and you're going straight into a live wire. That's if you've not turned the electric off. So, again, always make sure you turn the electric off. You never know where there's a. That's all the paper off now. Um, I've washed the wall down, scraped it off, I've cleaned the top edge of the picture rail and I've got to do the bottom edge of the skirting board, yeah? You can see my paper there lying, in, lying along the bottom, collecting all the muck. So let's just have a look at this skirting board edge. I mean, this is what you're uncovering now, there's cracks as well. So you've got a lot to deal with once you remove paper. Let's just have a look along that edge. It's not too bad in places, but we'll come down here and I'll just show you this bit. Now, I'll just get my camera stand. As you can see along here, it's looking pretty rough. Now, some of it has been filled with cork and things like that over the past. What I usually do is try and cut any cork off See, I'll show you that's cork. That's little bits of cork, which have always been used to fill this crack that keeps appearing because there's a hole and basically there's a lot of movement. Cork is just no good. Filler is just no good. 
and that's why we use foam to backfill, give it support and then you can use cork or filler and it won't crack out again. So two methods, you can cut it off like that, making sure you're not damaging the wood. And all sorts. See the bits of the skirt and move there. can do is using your, your uh, wood shaver there you go and that's how you clean your edges out first before you do any filling. Right, now I'm going to finish all the scraping and have a good clean up and then the next stage is all the filling process. Um, so that's the next video. Just the cleaning up to do now and again you can see here why I I put the paper down because you can just literally roll it up. And it's caught all the book. And it saves you messing about. Um, catches the water, keeps your dust sheets clean. Speeds up cleaning up. Now, sometimes I'd carry on and start the other processes, but I'm going to let this wall dry out because I would be just carrying on stripping. So I'm going to let the wall dry out and have a good clean up and start again when we do the filling. Let's just have a quick look at that wall now. There you go. All stripped, cleaned off, all the edges cleaned, tidied up, ready for the next process.